This is Mr. Morrow, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about the enhanced S video input of the RetroTank 4K. The RetroTank 4K is an advanced scaler, so it's recommended you read through the documentation to get acquainted with all of its features. This guide is pulling all of its information from the wiki, including settings for the Super NES. Enhanced S video utilizes both the SDP decoder, normally used for composite, and the RGB component receiver, which is normally used for RGB and component video. The RetroTINK 4K allows you to perform optimizations for the Lumis signal from S video and hone in the chroma signal from S video. So, where did this input come from? Well, the RetroTINK 5X has a special N64 320 optimal timing for sharper video but that used a trick that hedged on special math instead of using optimal timing information from the N64. With the RetroTINK 4K, you can have the special optimal timing without using any tricks, and you can use it on any console. Here's a small primer on how S-Video works. S-Video is also known as YC, or Luma, and Chroma. If those terms sound familiar to you, that is on purpose. Y from S-Video is the same as Y from Component Video's YPBPR, and Luma is the same as Sync on Luma from RGB. In this case, you can perform the optimization for sharpness and brightness as you would with Component Video. The only way to get enhanced S-Video working is through the HD15, or as I'll call it, the VGA port of the RetroTank 5X. This is the only port that is connected to both the SDP decoder and the RGB component receiver. You will need a specialized setup to use it. You can use a VGA to component converter and an S-Video breakout cable, but instead of plugging Y into green and C into blue, you would plug C into red. The pinout for the VGA was inspired by the pinout for SCART, which is why YC into green-blue doesn't work. SCART uses the pins for green and red instead of typical VGA, which is green and blue. You won't be able to use a typical VGA to S-Video adapter because the pinout will be incorrect. Another way to get enhanced S-Video working is with this adapter from LaserBear. The LaserBear adapter has both S-Video and composite inputs in case you want to use the back-facing composite input without using another rear RCA input. With all VGA connections, if you want to use audio, you will have to use the audio in input next to the VGA port, which accepts audio via 3.5 millimeter TRS jack. I'm going to use a female RCA to female 3.5 millimeter adapter and then a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. You can get a female RCA to male 3.5 millimeter adapter. I simply just don't have one. Now that we have this adapter and audio plugged in, let's take a look at how to use the enhanced S-Video on the RetroTank 4K. First, you're going to make your way to the input menu and you want to head down to the HD15 input. You have two choices. YC on green-red is the typical S-Video input, and this bottom option, YC on GR Enhanced, is the enhanced S-Video option. Select that. Once you select that, head into the RGB component receiver menu and set your optimal timings the same way you would with component or RGB. I am going to use a Super Nintendo information that you can easily find on the wiki. Once you finish with your sharpness settings and set phase, you'll want to make your way to the gain settings in the RGB receiver. You'll notice the red and blue settings show zero, and that's because this will only adjust the Luma setting, which comes through the green channel. Adjust this setting until you hit 255 on a screen with a pure white patch, and you'll optimize the Luma channel. Next, make your way to the SDP decoder menu. Once you're there, you'll see again that CB and CR are both zero. Without the Luma going through the SDP decoder, you won't be able to adjust your color channels. What you can do, however, is find the CTIE setting and adjust that. This makes the chroma channel narrower, which will help with sharpness. Adjust this to taste. After that, make your way down to the chroma shift option. This moves the chroma channel around to match up with the Luma setting. This setting will not be precise, but what I tend to do is make it so an object has the same amount of color on either side of it. I'm using the noisy lines at the edges of colors to adjust that, but you might find something better. Once that's done, let's check out a game. I'm going to use a Super Mario World because I love trying that one, but you can use any game. You can see when you load up the game, the chroma shift leads a little bit more adjustment. Set this to taste, save your profile, and you can start playing at any time. That's Enhanced S-Video.